Thank you, Michael. All right, so our simplification solution um, is, is very powerful and very customizable. Um, and, I, and today I'm going to show you a few different things, uh, such as our quote unquote one click solution, our simplify all in one step, um, our shrink wrap, uh, which is a tool that is uh, a bit different than the tool you'll see in Creo, and as well as um, ways to decimate our product, um, including the automation process of that. So today I have uh, this this engine piece, and um, I know from talking with a lot of my customers that um, simplifying a part like this, uh, this complex is sometimes difficult and sometimes very time consuming. So as you can see, it's got a lot of different cutouts inside. It's got a lot of different fillets on the outside. And uh, doing this sometimes could take hours, um, even days, depending on the size of the assembly. In this case, it's somewhat small, and so I'm going to show you our simplification. So in, within our simplification module, um, and in all of our modules, you always see these these top two, top three buttons. So you're going to see our select tool, which allows you to just select around the model, as well as define uh, what do you want to select, whether it be a, a face, body, assembly, or if you're looking for free edges to heal the model, you could do that here. Our delete tool, which allows us to delete selected objects, visible or invisible objects, and our check tool, which allows us to check the model for free edges or imprecisions. Um, so these three tools you're going to see in pretty much every module in evolution. Um, but we're going to focus on today, we're going to focus on our simplify, our simplify manually, and our shrink rep tool, and, I, and if we can get to it, I'll also get down to the bounding shapes. Um, it just depends on the time. So today I'm going to show you um, the simplify, and so within this option, we have multiple options. So we can simplify the assembly, um, which is going to remove internal bodies um, without actually simplifying the geometry. Or we have what you see are simplified bodies, which is going to simplify every body in the assembly, but not actually remove anything from the model. We also have the ability to simplify mixed geometries, and so a really good use case for this would be plant layout purposes. Um, so maybe you just need uh, the base where the, the giant machine is going to be bolted down. You just need that to be VREP geometry, and the rest can be tessellated. We could do that as well in our tool. And then we have what I, what I called earlier our one-click solution, and that is our simplify all in one step. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to simplify the assemblies and the body and give you a really good outputted solid model. Um, and, and, of course, transparency, this is a demo model, so I know how it's going to work perfect. But what you'll see is it's going to remove all of our internal features as well as reduce the file size pretty drastically here. Um, and so a really cool thing when I was talking about earlier about how customizable our tool is, we have the ability to exclude specific elements um, that you may need. So for instance, you may have um, connection points, you may have specific, specific flanges that something's going to attach to that your customer or your supplier needs to actually know and know where it's at. But the rest of the stuff you don't want to be seen. Um, and in doing so, we can do that here just by easily selecting a specific face and telling to exclude it. But for this demonstration, I'm not going to do that, and I'm just going to run this. So as you see, you see all these different facets and these different holes and cutouts, and as this runs, it's uh, simplifying the assembly and the bodies, and what you'll get is still a BREP model. So at, these cutouts were planar, so it knew within the algorithm to fill that that section in and what you'll see when you cut it open and look internally, it has removed all of those inner cutouts, fillets, etc. And so then you can save this out and what's really cool about 3D evolution and core technology tools is we do not need access to the native APIs to read or write to those. Um, so we can save out to pretty much any file formats you would be looking for, um, whether it be Katia, Creo, NX, Etc. Um, and that kind of also saves you that step. So that's that's the simplify all in one step, and that's that's the the one step solution. Um, but sometimes you may have to do other things. So maybe maybe your use case isn't just going to send it out because as you can see with this model, still with all these curves here, 
it's going to be very dense and it's going to contain a lot of polygons. Um, so for maybe the AR VR space or, or decimated model, this isn't exactly what you're looking for. Um, and so I wanted to show you uh, the ways that we can decimate a model in our tools. But before I go into that, do we have any questions? No, just um, if you do have that model and you don't change the decimation, Justin, the question is, is can you check and make it a solid model if you wished? Or is that what you're about uh, to show? Yes, of course. So we, we, can, we can check and create a solid model um, in our tools. Uh, that is actually a different module. We kind of touched on it a little bit earlier today, um, but I will show you and I will run. So this, this model is perfect. It doesn't have any free edges or imprecisions, um, but after running this check, if it were to have imprecisions um, or uh, sorry, um, didn't have any imprecisions or free edges, uh, we could then heal and or stitch the model. Um, and, and that is within our conversion tool, which is the same workbench that we can, that which I was showing you earlier where we can convert it to any of these different file formats. Any additional questions? No, I think that's it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move on to decimation. Um, so with this model, if you just wanted to, for instance, write it out to an FBX um, and do no decimation, you didn't really care about the polygon count, we can do that. You can write it out. As you'll see, it's going to look really nice, really, really slim. But when we save this out, and I've actually already pre-saved this. So when, they say, when we save this out, just as an FBX file, we are going to be looking at 2.7 megs. Um, and so as we go through here, um, and given this is a, a, a smaller model, I'll reload this model really quickly. So I reloaded this model. It's still it's VREP now. Um, we have a few different options uh, to make this model a, a little bit simpler, and and by doing so, we can we have this discretization area here where we can adjust our, our sag step angle. Um, and so for instance, it defaults to 0.1. So if I were to change it to one and ask it to convert, as you'll see, the, the, if I switch back here, as you see, the circles just aren't as perfect um, as they would be if you were to go 0.1. But what you're gonna find is it's going to be a lot smaller. And so I've, I've saved one of these out prior. And so just, just by not taking uh, the sag from 0.1 to 1, we've gone from 2.7 megs to 1.6 megs. Um, and so, as you know, with, with these threads, these threads make up a lot of faces. Um, and so that's where our simplification tool is going to come into play. Um, so with our simplification tool, we have the ability to do different bounding shapes. And I will reload this model and show you how we could easily simplify this model because maybe for a VR purpose, you don't really need to know that it has the cavities and, and things of that nature. So what we can do is we can use our simplify tool. We can simplify this all in one step. So we're going to fill in, but then we still have these threads here. Um, and so these threads could become a headache and then they also are going to increase the size of the model. Um, so with our bounding shapes tool, we can actually do a few cool things. So first we're going to use our simplify manually. So simplify manually is used to kind of uh, really be get an interactive approach to simplifying. So you can, you can keep the selected bodies um, or you can delete the selected bodies, but it really allows you to go through and what it does is when I split the bodies, it essentially makes a whole bunch of smaller bodies with these threads. So I'll use our bounding shapes tool then, and we can make different shapes. So we can box, cylinder, cone, elbow, polyhedron, extrusion, pyramid. So we'll select kind of which sizes or which pieces we want, and we want it to make a cylinder, but we want it to still maintain the same shape and the same size. So we'll make a bounding shape of this, and I'll select the thread because 
I wanted to go from this top face to the bottom face, but then I also want it to be as wide as this thread. So the thread sticks out, so we want it at its widest point. So I'll go ahead and make that bounding shape. So now we have the bounding shape. And what's cool about bounding shape is it's not actually selecting and changing anything. It's just creating a bounding shape. So you can choose to delete the bounding shape or you can choose to delete whatever entity you made the bounding shape of. Um, and so in this case, we'll hide the bounding shape and then we can just box select all the bodies we don't want, delete, quick delete, and then when we go back to show all, we have now deleted those threads. So now when we write this out to an FBX, and we'll still, and we'll go back to the point one, just so that we can have something to compare it to. We are now looking at one point one megs. So we go from the original FBX with threads with with simplification to one point six. So we save about a half a meg just in taking out uh, those threads there. And then what you'll see is it actually creates a lot simpler mesh as well. And we can, again, change that. This is at point one, so this is at the greatest, uh, a really, really tight defined mesh. So if we go to one or go to five, we're going to lose a little bit of the look, but we're going to still, we're going to gain less poly polygons. So that's how our simplification can kind of play into hand um, for decimation purposes. Um, and before I switch to our shrink wrap tool um, and our automation abilities, do we have any questions? Um, kind of, and I, and I don't know if you're going to cover it in your next slide. Do you have the ability, if you're dealing with like a plant layout, as an example, so the file that the customer said they deal with are over a gig? And they want to, in some cases, have parts of the file where it has a VREP. So for connecting points when doing the plant layout, they want to connect to the floor. And then when they, the other parts they don't care about. That could be tessellated or decimated or they don't even have to be in the model. Is there a possibility you can have that mixed geometry? Yes, uh, I touched on that earlier in the Simplify. Tool. So we actually have the ability to simplify with those mixed geometries. Um, okay. And then that could be written out to your flavor of file output. Okay. Thank you. So let me, no problem. So I will grab another file. All right. So this is a good, um, kind of a good thing, actually, a great question, because this is a good going into the shrink wrap tool, because this is a fairly large model um, that we're starting with here. And so um, I will. This model is 142 megs. And so as you can see, when I give this a cut here, this model is really detailed. So it actually, if I do this correctly, you even see the pins on the circuit board. So it's a really, really detailed model. And when you're doing a plant layout, this may not matter. Maybe you just want the outside um, bodies of the model. So maybe you just want a nice shell, um, but you don't want to change any of these geometry. Uh, and so if you've ever worked with Creo before, you, you hear shrink wrap and, and you automatically probably think tessellation. And I know um, in the recent years, Creo has begun to add the BREP tool to be able to do it with BREP data, but it's a little bit cumbersome and it's, it's not the easiest to use. Um, and so our tool um, and within our algorithm, we can identify the inside and outside bodies as well as inside and outside faces of a model. And so in doing so, we're still using the beer up data. And then again, because of our abilities in our libraries, we can write it out to whatever flavor of file format you're looking for. But what's really cool about this is if you still wanted to do a tessellation, we can still do the, the create shrink wrap, which is essentially just uh, a shrink wrapped, uh, just a whole large tessellated model um, that you would find from the shrink wrap of Creo. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll run the outside bodies, um, and then we also have a few different 
ways to, to define. Again, customization um, is really big with us, and, we're, and the abilities to customize to the customer's specific requirements are huge. Uh, and in doing so, we have a few different options. So in our shrink wrap option, we have our voxel size. So if you think of a voxel as kind of a cubic pixel, um, so we are telling this to do 1%, the voxel size is 1% of the model size, and that the number of layers. So we want it to go in two voxels before it would fill a hole. And same thing, we can exclude specific elements that maybe we want to include or exclude later on um, in the simplify. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the shrink wrap. And as you'll see here, this is 142 uh, meg model, and, and it doesn't take extremely long to run this operation. Now, I have ran it on very, very large models, gigabytes in size, um, and it still runs fairly quick, uh, especially for a model of that size. So it automatically defaulted on our outside body filter. Um, and so I guess I'll just show you really quick before I show you the inside. So this is what it has identified based on our voxel size, all the outside bodies. So maybe this is good for you. Maybe this meets your requirements. You write this out to a step file or to a TIA file, and you go about your day. And so that's a one-click solution. But maybe you need to get it a little bit smaller. So what we can do here is I'll save this out, and we will just save the visible objects. All right, so just going from original at, at 142.3 megs, we're down to 65.6 or 24.5 megs. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong file. Just in doing that one operation. Um, and as you can see, it identified quite a few internal bodies. So that giant engine, um, that circuit board we were talking about earlier, all these internal plates but they're still here, so we haven't deleted anything. We just simply saved out that filter, and we haven't changed anything, we haven't done anything with this internal bodies. But what's really cool is, as, as I was showing you the, the delete option, we can switch to our outside body filter, and then we have the ability to del just delete invisible objects. So we have everything, everything that we want here, and we know that, all we have to do is delete whatever was invisible and it's going to go through and it's going to delete that for you. So now when we go to our show all, now we just have our outside bodies. Um, but this still may be a little too large for you. Maybe you want to get rid of the grates. Well that's where we would go back to our simplify all in one step and it allows us to get rid of those grates as well as kind of fill in some of the holes. So now if we are going to save this We are now at 5.2 megs. So in, in, in two operations, we went from 142 megs to 5.2, and it still looks similar to what it did in the beginning. Now, we, we've lost the grates here, um, but then we could even take it further. So if we wanted to go to bounding shapes, which we've talked about prior, Yeah, and I showed you, we did. While you're doing that, can you do me a favor and open up the shell window as well? Yes, of course. Just maybe that's a time that you can show the repeatable functions. Thank you. So as, as David was talking about our show window, um, everything is being recorded. So every click that we have made here is being recorded. So and then we can take this and this is how we can build our script. So when I'm, I'm about to get to the EDM and I'll show you the EDM. But within our scripts, you have a lot of out-of-the-box scripts that we provide you with that are easily um, editable. But furthermore, you can create your own scripts and automate these processes. So if you find yourself doing the same recipe over and over and over again, then we can then script that, and so you're not even doing that. And we can, we can do that based on scripts to where you don't open up any graphical uh, interface, or we can actually do that here in the show window by copying and paste or we can even create a session button here to where it'll run a specific set of operations based on the script that you write. Um, so, but it will run it graphically, so you will see everything. So maybe if you have 
um, a model to where you know you're going to remove entities of this size. Um, you can just have that scripted and then have it remove bodies that are smaller than X amount millimeter squared or whatever cubed and then keep going about your simplification process and that's if something's different or if you find yourself doing a lot of things maybe you're doing generators or um, a lot of bigger things you can just run that session file but what I what I do want to show you is EDM and so I guess I'll show you that now since the question came up so we have this we have this compressor here and so maybe we want to remove these bolts and we want to remove specific entities on this. So I'm just going to run this through a quick out of the box. I'm not going to do any editing, but this is our EDM. So this is our batch manager. This, this, our batch manager shows you what jobs have been ran, and if they've ran, if there's been any problems, you'll get a, uh, a little X or a warning sign. It'll also tell you the duration of them running. Um, and then we have our list of scripts here. Uh, and so I'm going to run this script, and this is essentially you defined what you want, which model is is what you want simplified, and then you define where you want it to be outputted. So in this case, I have an output directory. And then you also define where you want it to go. So if you want it to go to CATIA, CREO, and X, you define your target system in the tar target format. So I'm just not going to change anything. And I'll just leave this at uh, details of 2,000 uh, millimeters cubed. Uh, so it's going to remove all bodies that are uh, that size or less and then we click run. And so this, this is something that it will save you countless amount of times because for one, you're, you're not having to open the model graphically. And for two, if it's a really large model, you can set this up, let this run, and then go about working the rest of your time. So I, I've done this before. Um, so this will take about 25 to 30 seconds to run. And then in my output folder, I will have my simplified model. So here's the model that it created. And when I pull this in to 3D Evolution, we have created our simplified model. So as you can see, it removed the bolts. It's completely filled in solid. And if we go over to our previous model, as you can see, it was really detailed inside. So 30 seconds, didn't have to do anything. Uh, this model gets completely simplified. You remove all the entities. Um, and then again, as I was, I, I keep going back to the customization, and, and I, I really want to drive that home, is because you can define the requirements, and our tool can be told how to work based on those requirements. So it, again, if you have certain elements, by, you can call those by attributes. There's, there's a, a bunch of different ways that within the script we can define what's excluded or what's removed. Uh, and that really just comes from us working with you and kind of defining the best process for you. And so before I move on to the last portion, do we have any questions? As of this moment, we do not, but I'd like to remind the attendees that uh, on the toolbar of the bottom, there's the Q&A function and the chat function. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, if you'd like to see something differently or if you'd like to have something explained in a different manner, we'd be more than happy to do so. All right, and so back to this model. So what we know is we started this model it came in at 142.3 megs. Just saving it after running a shrink wrap to identify the outside bodies, we've gotten it to 24.5 megs. After running that shrink wrap and then using our one-click solution of simplify all in one step, we have now gotten that file down to 5.2 megs. And then what we could do is we could take this and we could tell it to become bounding shapes. Um, and so bounding shapes, it would essentially create this as your cylinder, your box. And I will run this. And 
And so now we have our bounding shapes, which I will show you here. So this is this is all bounding shapes because when when it creates those bounding shapes, you get a custom filter down here that'll allow you to choose those bounding shapes. And then we can go through File Save. And we are now down to 1.6 megs. Um, so again, we can we can customize this process to get to where you're, what where you're looking for. Um, and there's there's quite a few extremes. So there's some some instances maybe you can't afford to have this smokestack um, be a bounding shaper, or maybe this step or or this bottom plate has to maintain um, the exact look. We can really get down and nail down within our scripts. And let me see if I can open up the script to kind of show you. What I'm talking about. And so within our scripts, these come out of the box from Core Technology when you purchase the tool. And it, it goes through and it's, it's really easy to edit this script and change specific entities or add specific exclusion lists. Um, so in this, this specific script is actually simplifying the assembly. And then we're checking the models to get the number of faces and bodies here, simplifying the assembly. Um, and as you can see, it's doing a shrink wrap. It's also doing a simplify on one. And then you will get your uh, check again for the faces and bodies. And then it'll flatten the assembly if you chose to flatten the assembly. It'll select your outside faces if you choose to. And this is all comes with our tool. And this is all completely editable. And our engineers, Frank and Marco, are the best in the business when it comes to defining what your requirements are and creating the script to work how you would like it to. If, for instance, you want the script to just call to a specific folder and, and consistently look for, for updated models in those folders. We can actually do that and then have those those models that are placed in that folder or a specific script will be ran on those so that you know when you drop those models in the folder, that's going to kick off in the background and you'll get your output in file format. And it takes little to no effort on the engineer except for finding the model and then obviously reviewing the model when it's finished.